This is the charging adapter Nissan Leaf owners need right now. Hey there, EV lovers. Welcome to EVpedia, your ultimate hub for everything electric vehicles. If you're as pumped about the future of transportation as we are, then you've come to the right place. We're here to bring you the latest news, reviews, and tips on all things EV. But before we dive into the electric goodness, we need your help to keep our battery charged. So if you enjoy what you see, give that subscribe button a little love, hit the like button to show your support, and drop us a comment with your thoughts or questions. And if you're feeling extra generous, consider giving us a super thanks to help us improve and bring you even more amazing content. We promise we read every single one of your messages. A new CHIDMO to CCS adapter could add many more years of driving to your LEAF. With all the talk of Tesla's NACS charging connector taking over the EV industry in North America in the years to come, it's easy to forget about CHIDMO. The plug fitted to the Nissan LEAF, the car that was once the best-selling EV in the world. Other EVs that use the connector include the first-gen Kia Soul EV, the Mitsubishi IMI EV, and the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. Nissan has sold over 650,000 LEAF EVs globally since its debut in 2010, and at least 210,000 of those made their way to North America. These are not rookie numbers by any stretch of the imagination, but with fast charging operators steering away from the aging CHIDMO plug to focus on NACS and CCS1, it's getting harder and harder for LEAF owners to plan long distance road trips. But there might be a solution, albeit a rather pricey one. Enter the A2Z CHIDMO to CCS1 adapter that promises to make life much easier on the road for people who drive a CHIDMO equipped EV. It's rated at 1000 volts and 250 amps, which comes out to 250 kilowatts, much higher than the 62.5 kilowatt maximum DC fast charging rate the latest and greatest Nissan LEAF can accept. It's also $999, which is a lot of money for an adapter and quite big size wise. But it's not the first and certainly not the last CHIDMO to CCS adapter to come to market. We covered a similar device made by a Chinese company earlier this year, which costs about the same as a 2ZS solution. So if you're in the market for something like this, be prepared to spend big money and have room in your trunk for it. The biggest difference between the A2Z adapter and other products on the market is that A2Z actually went through the trouble of testing it before putting it up for sale as our own Tom Malufny said in the unboxing video embedded above. That's a big deal for customers because it offers some reassurance that the big and expensive piece of plastic between their car and the DC fast charger won't become a fire hazard. Furthermore, A2Z bundles a USB cable and USB memory stick in the box. So if a user encounters problems with the adapter, they can contact the company to come up with a fix. Once it's ready, the adapter's software can be flashed via the included cable to make it work as promised. However, it's worth noting that none of the car manufacturers who use the CHIDMO connector on their EVs endorse the use of this, or any, adapter. It's the same with the charging providers, who want people to know that the use of non-OEM adapters exempts them from any liability if something goes wrong. As opposed to the NACS and CCS systems, which use Powerline Communication, PLC, the CHIDMO standard uses the CN bus protocol, which is similar to the modules inside modern cars. This means that a CHIDMO to CCS adapter needs to interpret the signals before allowing electricity to flow through. It's also the reason why the adapter is so big compared to the NACS to CCS units, or vice versa. These caveats prompted CHIDMO Association Representative Tomoko Bleck to take a strong stand when talking about these sorts of adapters with inside EVs at the beginning of the year. While the CHIDMO Association understands that some people may be disappointed we cannot guarantee that there is no risk of burns or electric shock, and we can only ask consumers to take responsibility if they still wish to use such a product, Black said. What's your take on this? Would you spend $1,000 on a product that promises to make road trips more hassle-free, even if it's not endorsed by the car manufacturer that built your EV? Let us know in the comments below. And that's a wrap for today's episode of EVpedia. We hope you had as much fun as we did exploring the world of electric vehicles. Remember, your likes, subscribes, and comments are the sparks that keep our motor running. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider giving us a super thanks. Your contributions make a huge difference and help us deliver even better content. So click that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching and stay charged. Until next time, keep it electric.